So one of the most interesting problems in a database is to ensure read your write consistency. Right? A lot of people understand it actually theoretically, but today what we'll do is we'll dig deeper and figure out how to actually do it, how to actually implement read your write consistency. And first we'll understand what it is, then we'll see how it is implemented. But all of this in context of a dissection of a blog from Atlassian about how Bitbucket scaled their database and made it more performant. Okay, so uh, all the links are in the description down below or below the description in the iCard. You can find it very easily. Um, let's dig deeper. So Bitbucket, as you know, is uh, very similar to GitHub. It's code revisioning. Uh, we don't need to know its internals. What we are more interested in is what they have done with the database and how they've ensured the read write consistency and made their database performant. Okay, so their architecture looks something like this. Like all, almost all regular services, they have a master instance and a bunch of replicas. So all the reads, uh, all the critical reads and writes go to master, but all the reads that are okay with the stillness go to replica, a classic setup. They have their publicly exposed REST API and their main Bitbucket web UI that they have served through two services written in Django framework. Now, both of the services handles millions of requests per hour because obviously a lot of traffic goes there. Now, um, a bunch of things have happened uh, to make sure, again, uh, they use, uh, essentially they use Postgres as their database. And because of which they typically have to employ a, employ a simple connection pool in front of it because in Postgres, whenever a client connects, Postgres spins up a new process rather than a thread. So it becomes very expensive. You typically have to have a connection pool before Postgres to keep it up and running. Now, one very interesting thing to note is uh, for every request that a user makes on any of the services typically leads to about 10, 10 plus database queries. So because of which, uh, because of a lot of these factors, there is a lot of load on the database and uh, which is where still, uh, which is where scalability, stability and performance plays a key role. Now, one of the core problems that happens in a code revisioning tool like Bitbucket is that you need to ensure read your write consistency. For example, you either go with super strict, strong consistency is uh, no matter where your read goes, whatever you have written is what you're reading and everybody else is reading the same thing. But if not that, at least you need read your write consistency, which essentially means that the most recently thing that I have written, if I issue a read for it, I should be able to get it right on a single load. It's, it's actually very much doable because you have a single load on which the writes are going on which the reads are going. So not a big problem, but as soon as we have a setup where you have a master replica, where your writes can go to master and your reads will go to replica thing starts to become interesting because it is possible that your rights have gone to your rights will go to master. And then when the reads go to replica, the because of replication lag, the data has not yet been updated or the replica has not gotten your data yet. Right? So the objective of this entire drill is to solve read after write consistency. What it says is super simple. If I'm the user, I fire a write, and then I fire the read, I should be able to, or I should get my most recently written data. Simple, right? So given this, we can split this, or we can distill this information into something like this, that a bunch of reads can go to read replica, not a problem. So imagine all this, re all this operation reads and write operations are happening for the same key. Kind of uh, imagine a Jira issue or imagine a bit bucket issue, kind of that. All the reads are going, all the reads and writes operations are going for that corresponding issue ID or for the corresponding file or whatever. Um, the key thing is a lot of reads can go to replica, but as soon as the write has happened, all subsequent reads should be consistent, which means it should get the data that I have freshly written. Right? So, which means all the reads after this write has happened should go to either primary, which is your master, or it should go to a replica, which is caught up. Right? Now, this is where things starts to become interesting and you'll start getting hints on how they have implemented or how they would have implemented. Right? 
again remember this this is read your write consistency this is not strong consistency there is a difference so strong consistency is whatever i have written if me or anybody else reads it gets the most recent value that's strong consistency while read your write consistency is bit more relaxed and it says that whatever i have written and if i read it i would get the latest one but if someone else reads it it's okay if they get either the stale value or they get uh, that it is non existent right so it's a relaxed version of it okay so this is what we want to implement now if to understand the solution we need to just have one small prerequisite which is to understand how replication works right once we understand it the solution is not very difficult it's very counter intuitive but it's fun to go through so the problem that you have that you don't get your read or write consistency is that writes went to master reads are going to replica your reads happen before the data is replicated right so that's where replication is a very critical component over here and replication although in case of postgres mysql or any database replication is fast but it is not instantaneous which means you typically have to deal with replication lags so how does replication work the idea is simple replica keeps pulling the data from master it's not actually data but it actually is the write ahead log file from that it keeps pulling in all the entries so when writes go to master the master applies the writes on its own copy of data and then it flushes it into a write ahead log file okay. in this write ahead log file that you have which is typically your append only log in that append only log the entry that it makes it literally contains the sql query that is fired kind of there are other formats but we won't go into that but uh, imagine this it dumps the sql query that was fired over there now from there it is also prepended with something called as an lsn number lsn is the n is number but yeah lsn log sequence number right now log sequence number is essential for you to know this entry happened then this then this then this and so on and so forth so it is monotonical increasing we'll dig deeper into what it is but the idea is the wall file each entry by entry is pulled by replica and then applied on its own copy of data right that's how replication works so replication is pull based replica pulls from master from its wall file applies it on its own copy of data right? okay now let's dig deeper into understanding what actually is happening uh, how this problem is solved so here i gave a small hint when i was explaining where i said that for you to have read your read your write consistency it means that once i have written after this the subsequent reads should either go to the master because master has the latest copy of data or it should go to the replica that has been caught up with your changes so here the solution that bitbucket employed was going with a second approach because the master was overburdened right so there is no point uh where your master where then why do you have replicas if all reads and writes are going to the master so to make sure that they are using replicas very well they make sure that the reads after writes go to the replica that have the changes that the changes have been replicated okay so how they do it the idea is simple whenever a particular user imagine these are atlassian users which means your bitbucket account if you log in you do something your user id so whenever a user writes the changes are committed the wall entry is created and the django middleware notes the lsn number by firing a sql query so if you fire the sql query on postgres you get the lsn number which means when your commit has happened right the entry has been created the lsn number that is written you can get it with this sql query now this means that for this particular user this is an lsn number right so which means this update that has happened is this lsn number imagine that lsn number is 129 it's it's 64 bit number but i'm using a smaller number for reference so imagine that number is 129 now imagine there is a replica replica is doing what replica is reading the wall file entry by entry and applying on its own copy of data so replica might be a few lsn's behind let's say the replica lsn is 102 now you know 
that if replica LSN is on 102 and master LSN is on 129 and your changes was 129, you definitely know that this replica does not have your change. Right? Now, this LSN numbers are monotonically increasing, right? which means there would never be a case where uh, the subsequent LSN is smaller than the previous LSN that have been generated. So you can rely on this. Now, this is what would start giving you a hint on what they are trying to do. So what they are essentially trying to do is they are trying to fire the query to a replica, to a replica that has the changes that that user is expecting. That's the whole idea. That's the whole idea. So what they are actually doing is so whenever in case of Django, they use middlewares a lot. Right? So in one of the middleware, what the idea is very simple. What they're essentially doing is whenever the request comes to the Django web server, during that it checks that after authentication is done, it knows your user ID for that user ID. It checks that, Hey, this user ID, last change for this user ID was at which LSN and it also measures the LSN current LSN on each of the replica and at the beginning of the request it sees that this would be the read replica for this request and this is the master connection object that it already knows right so this way it ensures that if the request also goes to a particular read replica it would have the data that this user is expecting there. That's the whole idea, right? It seems super expensive, super expensive, but let's see how expensive it really is. Let's dig deeper. So of course you need to store this somewhere. Essentially what you want to store is this is the user that has done some right operation. The red lines that you see is right operation. Your user has done some right operation, right operation has gone to master node. Right. Then you copy the LSN number. You, you basically query the LSN number and you store it in your LSN store, which is Redis. Right. So in this Redis, what you are essentially storing is are essentially storing. This is the Atlassian user ID and this is its LSN number. Okay. Now when the reads happen, the flow that I mentioned. So when the reads happen in the Django middleware, the first thing that it does for that user, it essentially gets the LSN from the LSN store. Then it checks which of the replica at that stage has the, has the, uh, has at least that LSN number because LSN is monotonically increasing. You can literally compare it, right? And then it picks one replica for that request and master node is already there. And then the request goes forward, right? So if it wants to fire the read request, it can go to replica while the write request can go to master, right? This is how they minimize the load that needs to go on to master unnecessarily and they can leverage replicas really well. That's the whole idea. And this is how you can practically implement read your write consistency. A lot of people think, oh, how would I implement it? This is the, this is one of the easiest ways I found that you can implement read your write consistency without having to go through all the requests going through the master node. Now, how expensive is this? It's, I was surprised, relatively surprised that it's not very expensive, but uh, for every request, if you observe, what you want to do is you would be making one query to Redis to get the LSN number and depending on the replicas, you would be firing one query on each replica. You can do a bunch of optimizations there, but naive way, imagine one or two milliseconds on each replica. You might have four or five replicas. You might do a bunch of them in parallel. So an overall that you get is uh, overall that Bitbucket got was 10 millisecond overhead, which is tolerable for Atlassian. So they went ahead with this approach. The benefit that they got was they got a massive reduction of load on master because now literally the all the reads are going to replica and bunch of reads which cannot go to replica go to master and all the writes go to master. So the load on master redu reduces by a massive margin number one and you get read your write consistency and this is how you practically implement read your write consistency and by doing this what they got is their number of requests going to the primary node or going to the master reduced by 50%. When they reduce by 50%, which means like load is very less and they could scale down if they want to, they did not mention in the block if they have scaled down or not. Right? 
pretty fascinating right this is something that we always think how would we implement read or write consistency and today we have an answer one thing i suddenly recalled that i did not cover is the query let's understand the query that they have written because like you are you write this query why not right okay so here this is where you get the current lsn number this is a pretty standard query on which you know how to get your log location is what you're trying to get like your replay location or the log location which is your current lsn number right that's how you get it more interestingly what you want to know is the lsn number on each replica so you need to know from the api server where your in your middleware code you'll fire query into replica to see if you are ahead or behind that's what you need to know right so for you to know if you're ahead or behind you need to do that greater than or less than right but here what we typically do is we find the difference pg x log location difference is a standard function that is available because you cannot or you should not just do difference difference right you uh, like a raw subtraction right so you're using the utility that is provided by the database you take the difference and you figure out how far behind you really are right so use this to figure out if you are behind or not that's what it returns true or false and you get to know ki, okay i'm behind this or as in if i have caught up or not right so that's why the function is caught up you take the replica you take the user lsn you take the lsn manager you fire the query and you know that if you have uh if you're caught up or off, if this replica is caught up or not and you fire this for each of the replica so you know which ones are caught up and then you pick one of them as at random and that becomes your read replica for that request fascinating and with this they save 50 percent queries firing or hitting their master which means master becomes more performant more stable they can even reduce the size if they want to and they are very heavily and in a better way utilizing their replica and this is what I wanted to cover today. This is something that I always wondered. I found a bunch of approaches before this to implement read or write consistency, but they were not very clear on what exactly needs to be done. This is something that I stumbled and I kind of like this idea that you check how far behind the replicas really are. <laughs> Pretty straightforward uh, way to do it. And surprisingly, uh, not very expensive 10 millisecond overhead. For most use cases, it's acceptable. Uh, if it's acceptable for you, you can go ahead with that. If not, then you figure out other ways to do it. Right? But yeah, this is all what I wanted to cover today. This again is a dissection of a blog from Atlassian, uh, especially Bitbucket team. So you can find it below the description and uh, in the iCard right now. Uh, go through that. It's very fascinating. It's very breezy read. Whatever I explained, it's right there, there. And uh, in general, uh, do check out my courses. I teach system design, which is highly practical, completely no fluff. Uh, lots of brainstorming filled with brainstorming rather than drawing boxes. I don't like drawing boxes much, but go into implementation nuances and building prototypes to build a deeper understanding. In case you are interested, do check that out. It's quite fun. I've been doing it for four years. Like I have a ball on weekends morning and uh, have a great time talking to amazing people. So yeah. So yeah, this is all what I wanted to cover in this one. I hope you found it interesting. Hope you found it amusing. That's it for this one. I'll see you in the next one. Thanks a ton.